we're out here in between buoy one and the CR buoy. Uh, yesterday we did some customer fishing and it was a little lumpy coming out because of the big minus tides. Uh, we got them their coho and then we did some bottom fishing. So we're back out again today to try to get some, some fish for our freezer. And uh, a little bit calmer today. We waited for just a little bit more of that minus tide to settle down before we came out. Pretty calm. And uh, we're out here about 150 feet of water in between buoy one and the CR buoy. And we're gonna troll with it a little bit and see if we can find some biters. Grab that rod just like that. Yeah, you got both hands. Remember, keep one hand right up here. All right, now remember when we put it out, we're gonna hold the flasher and the weight's gonna dangle, right? Now come over here, walk to the edge a little bit, put the weight in the water, and then we let go of the flasher. And we know it's working because everything's in a straight line, right? We got our spinner back there. For coho, we do it nice and close like that, all right? Yeah, a couple of anchovies. We'll run our Jib flag tinsel skirt on this one with the helmet on the anchovy. The yeah, right there in the plastic bag. All right, very effective setup. Check this out. So we got one of our bumpers. This one's 18 inches. Out in the ocean, I like that little bit longer one because I'll bounce back and forth between a regular flasher and a pro troll. Uh, but in the river, I take this down. If I'm using an in uh, inline flasher, I'll shorten that up a little bit. Come back to one of our anchovy spinners okay and what's really nice about these anchovies leaders that we have is number one you can build them yourself all it is is our number five or number three and a half cascade on our plastic clevis a bead a hoochie a couple four out owner hooks that's all it is now what we're going to do we're going to take the bottom hook and we're going to put it in about oh a third of the way or two thirds of the way down the anchovy pop it out just like that and what I want to do is I want to get a bend of that anchovy so where it turns so depending on the length of the anchovy because sometimes you get long ones sometimes you get short ones right that's life some of us get shorter end of the stick you wrap it around the shank of that top hook and that's going to collect the line between the two hooks there and you're going to be able to get that kink in there just like that what's really nice about running this setup here in particular with this detachable clevis is that you could run about three or four different colors to start your day if you have that many rods out. But then if one rod's getting bit more than, than another, you're gonna notice the fish wants that particular blade. So the way we organize our blades is in these guys here, our little round packs, just like that. Keep all your blades separate in there. This one, they've been biting really, really well. This is our bright, or I'm sorry, this is our slump buster the red and white with the candy pink back. So we're gonna fish that, but should it change, we have a couple other blades out, should that change, we'll take one of our blades out of here, unclip that one, grab a new one, and clip it right on there, okay? With these smaller blades, you don't have to worry about losing the blade as much as you do with the larger blades in these detachable clevises. So don't be afraid to, to use some blades, okay? So reel it up to the tip, make sure you push that little red button, Make sure it's zero. Okay? Let me get the rod nice and tight. Alright, there you go. Go ahead and put it at 21 feet for me, son. Here we go, Braden. Hold on, let me pull it all the way over, son. Hold on, hold on. Alright, reel it. Hammer that thing, son. Reel him. Reel him in the rod holder, buddy. Oh, boy. You still there? Yep. Oh, buddy, look at him fighting. Woo! Got him? Got him, boy. This is the little guy. This is the little guy. Yeah, we're going to let that one go, okay? Hey, why don't you go let that one back down to 24 for me, okay? That one right there, right up there. Good job, buddy. So we started a little bit, kind of trolling out with it. We're, we're just at the 185 mark, and so the CR buoy is just south of us right now, about a quarter of a mile. We got a lot of them 
I got 280 feet yesterday. I wouldn't have figured we'd try something a little bit different, you know. You gotta try something different. It's hard to leave it's hard to leave the fish that you've been catching and you know you could run out there and get them. But this is really what makes you a, a better fisherman is getting out and trying new stuff, trying new water at different times and that way you know if at some time you're not getting them out at a certain spot, you could run to a different one where you caught them in the past. That's, that's important to be able to do that, have that confidence to be able to, to go somewhere else. There we go. Is he still there? Alright. All right. Go walk forward, walk towards Karen. You got it? Good job, walk towards Karen. Alright, point the rod out sideways, son. Good job, dude. Great, nice fish, dude. Oh, he's a native, so he's got to go back, son. Yeah. Oh, crummy. me. Oh. Your head's up. Okay. Beautiful coho, though. Hold on to that rock, son. He's got it. I'm just giving you some flash. All right. So, these coho, right now we can only keep hatchery, and right down here by my thumb, my left thumb, is what's called their adipose fin. That's how we identify a hatchery from a wild fish. That one being a wild fish, we're gonna let him go. Just like that there. We're gonna put this back down and see if we can get another one. Good job, buddy. What do you think? when the guys don't even know the camera man has to wake us up. He's a fighter and a jumper. A fighter and a jumper. Alright, this one's gonna be all you buddy. I want you to get this one out of the rod holder and everything. Keep on going. Good job son. Oh yes. Alright get him out of the rod. Get the rod out of the rod holder. Out of point. Keep on going. You got this. Whoa, he's pulling. You got this number. Grab it up here. Grab it up here. All right, now lift it out of there for me. Nice. You got it? Lift her up nice and high. Good work, son. Oh, it's a ho-ho. Up, up, up in the eye. Up in the eye. Super high. Super high. Oh. There you go. Son, you got to stand up. Look super high. Okay, you got to reel up. Rub one more time. That way. That way. That way. That way. That way. Man, point him away from the boat, buddy. There you go. Alright, lift up super high. Got him! Woo! Hey! Boom! Let me see your dab. Boom. Do it again. Do it to the camera. Cam Newton ain't got nothing on this kid. Hey buddy, you have to keep her. Yeah. Woo! Red button, power button. 
push it on until it go on. Get him, son. Good job, buddy. Good job, Braden. It's a fight. It's a fighter. Oh, yeah. That's what we're after. Getting close to him. Oh, he's back there swimming. Look at that, bud. You got a good one. Nice fish, huh? Oh, that's a good one. Just turn into him. Good thing we got the prop saver. Pick it up. Keep fighting him. So we've got a nice fish on right now. When I'm getting ready to net the fish with a customer, first thing I do is clear things out of the way, like my rod holder, I start ripping my boat apart. So we've got a nice fish on right now. When I'm getting ready to net the fish with a customer, first thing I do is clear things out of the way, like my rod holder, I start ripping my boat apart. I take the bottom of the net, I hold it right here. Customer's gonna reel down to that low red bead, lift up in the air nice and easy, Pull on him, Jeff! Pull on him! No! Holy bloopers! Oh. <laughs> that was a summer! Dude! So I gotta... <laughs> I gotta tell you... <laughs> I gotta tell you, we have talked so much, so many times about doing a video on how to net a fish. We, 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 have, we have done, that's part of my seminar on how to net a fish with a customer. That fish, we're out here co-fishing, it ripped about 200 feet of line out. It had to weigh high 20s. That was a big fish. That was a big fish. I should have got my big net. I had my coho net out. We and, got excited. And we got excited. That's the first big fish we've seen of the year. That's the first big fish we've seen since the spring. And I'll tell you what, the excitement kicked in. <laughs> we were reaching, we were pulling. We were reaching, we were pulling, we were doing everything we weren't supposed to be doing. And and he's gone. He's, he's gone. That, that's, I, we've been doing this how long? A long freaking time. We've netted, I don't know how many fish, landed, I don't know how many fish. You're gonna get but, it all from us. You're gonna get the good, the bad, and the ugly. We're not gonna edit anything. That, that was the That ugly. right there was 100% excitement, adrenaline. We hadn't seen it in a long time. And it went south. He won.
fun, man. Wrapped her up, came back in. We just went out and played a little bit today. Wanted to catch a couple coho to make a couple meals for the 4th of July and went out and got a bonus canvas on. I won't say what happened. I won't repeat what happened with the uh, the big fish. So uh, you guys, you there, guys saw what happened. There I, is some big Chinook out there. There's some big Chinook out there. I don't know. Make sure you use the right net for the right job. Anyways, but the, we are very, very grateful to bring home a couple of nice, nice coho. There were. I mean, which is a good thing. Is it, yeah, it is a good thing. constraining stock, so you, know, you, uh, you actually won't. I'm pretty sure as a tule I knocked off with the net. Yeah, there's a lot of chrome bright tules that look like they're a giant summer that's going to go to the bottom. See <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit on the other. All right. Uh, quick little, I guess, side note on the cooking part, but we're going to do some potatoes with our coho, some blackened potatoes. This is just rendering down some bacon, green onion, and garlic. Get this rock and rolling. I took some potatoes and I roasted them on the grill, so they're already cooked, actually. And then what we're going to do is we're going to throw them in the pan, finish them off. Really easy, quick side dish. And then we're going to hit them with blackening seasoning and salt. I haven't seasoned them at all. When I put them in that roasting pan, all I did is threw some olive oil or maybe avocado oil in there. And uh, all the seasoning and flavor those potatoes are gonna come come through here in a minute we'll put all that together we got our coho steaks this is uh not filleted so we're doing steaks on this one so we did a little bit of salt a little pepper we did some olive oil first uh and then a little bit of garlic powder so just pure and simple and not get in the way of the fish let it cook up and and just add a little bit of flavor without getting in the way Well, okay, hold on. So what I did before we went fishing yesterday is I took measurements of my grill, right? Yep. And so this is only 32 inches wide. And that fish, after looking back at it and replaying it in my head, was around the 40, 40 to 45 inch lengthwise. So it wouldn't fit in here. 
Yeah, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, so there's no sense to no. put that thing in the net, really. No. We, yeah. There's so many 35 pound Chinook swimming around Astoria, you can get those all the time. Right, so it just, for practical reasons and for reasons of making this film, I was like, well, I'm just gonna knock it off with the net instead. Yeah. Be done with it. Quick release. <laughs>